<coughs> well, they say the early bird gets the worm. Let's see if the early bird can get the win. Welcome to an episode of Orioles franchise. That might have been one of the cornier ways I've ever opened a stream. But hey, I'm a corny guy. We have Corbin Burns, who remarkably, remarkably is under 500, with a ERA of under three and a half. Clearly, the offense is not supporting him when he pitches. So, before we get into the game, let's let's take a look at the league leaders and. The awards and different things like that that I probably should be doing on a more regular basis. Once again, I will update the title and the uh, description after the game. All right, but I'm only going to show like the top 10 of the league leaders. We'll start in the American League where Jose Altuve is primed to win a batting title, which I believe he, yes, he's done three times before, so this would make him a four-time batting champ. I would love to get Gunnar Henderson up there, but that's probably not going to happen. Holden Keith and Evan Carter up there as well. Gunnar Henderson, third and a hit. At bat, I don't. Okay, this is a guy we might need to watch out for. And apparently, Toronto gets a lot of doubles because there's Kevin Kiermaier and Vladdy. Still can't believe this is a thing. George Springer. I try to avoid those Springer dingers. Lots of multiple guys from one team. You got two Yankees, two Orioles, and two Rangers. Three or three Yankees in the top ten. Wow. Masataka. He must be their entire offense. <laughs> Gunnar Henderson is probably most definitely going to go well over 100 runs scored. Oh. Kyle Tucker leading the league in steals is a bit of a surprise. Ryan Noto. See, this makes sense because you know you don't want to pitch to, you, but Ryan Noto, seventy walk. Oh, 
Oh, I thought they took Colt and Calgary. <laughs> Cookie Tucson. Really? I mean... Poor Corbin Burns. The next day for Craig Kimber will be number 30 for the year. God, these record numbers are so unrealistic. Innings pitched. <laughs> Colton Burn is leading in pitching war, but being under five hundred is ridiculous. That's going to be a fun race to watch. Let's get into our game. From inside Rogers Center in downtown Toronto, the show brings you a matchup of division rivals. It's the Baltimore Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays. John Chavi and Chris Singleton on the call. Anthony Santander riding a power surge coming into this one, Chris. He's homered in four straight games. He is managing to find pitches that he can barrel up and do damage with. And really, that's the key for him. As long as he can get the bat to it, because he's so strong, there's a good chance that it leaves the ballpark. First pitch coming your way next. So, almost ready to get underway. Our starter in this one, Chris Bassett. 
Well, you know this guy wants to be better than that. I mean, the ERA is bloated. He understands that he's got to put his team in a better position to win ball games. And at this point, you have to forget about your own individual stats, and you have to go out there and attack and try to get that W. And if you do that, you'll look up, and most likely that ERA will have dropped over time. And that one pulled foul. Right-hander kicks deals. That one finds the zone, and it's only two. Fly ball down the line. This has got a chance, and it is foul. And a pitch. Hammers that one. Curling down the line, and foul. And he'll shoot. Oh. Shortstop takes the ball. This is a hitter who takes his game to another level playing at night. Wow, Jose Otuve hitting for the cycle. Not oh. close with that one. And the count's even at two. Three, and two. another ball. Let's go, Gunner. Five foul balls in this at bat so far, and these two are going head to head. You can see the crowd. They're starting to get into it a little bit more and more each pitch, even though there hasn't been a foul in play yet. Goes down looking. Here's Adley Rutschman. Here's a hitter who's been strong in the clutch lately, more than an RBI per game over his last 10. And first offering is fouled off. And a pitch. That one ripped. And it's gone. Adley Rushman. He made him pay for Giving the Orioles the early lead. Chris, he's homered in back-to-back -back games now. Yep, seeing the ball well, and he's got his timing locked in. He's looking pretty dangerous at the dish right now. great job of anticipation there he knows he throws the sinker that one down in the zone you're trying to beat it to the spot it's getting to well he won so one out nobody on Ryan O'Hearn comes up to hit swings through that one for strike one part of the order coming through now and with one home run already in this inning they're definitely looking to do some more damage liner base hit there we go. Let's support Corbin Burns. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. That cool. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, Anthony you feel really Sun good Rondale. about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. Oh, Anthony oh, Santander in the box oh, no. with one away as he takes ball one. Bassett, a former All-Star. He features a sinker, a cutter, a curve, a slur, and he works in a changeup. There's a swing and a miss. No one at the pitcher wants a ground ball double play opportunity here. You've got to lay off pitches down in the zone. Right there, swinging at that pitch, that's a no-no. That one misses, and a count two and one. One run across in the frame so far here in game one of this three-game set. And it's even up. This guy's got such a good sinker. As a hitter, you've got to look up in the zone. If you look down, you're going to be chasing stuff in the dirt. That's going back. Back some more. And it's a one-hopper off the wall. 
should be extra bases. Lead runner holds at third, so two runners in scored position and just one out. Well, he wasn't afraid to hit with two strikes. I think he choked up a little bit, maybe spread out, but he got the job done right there. Arnton Dare keeps up the hot hitting. Here's Ryan Mountcastle. Golden opportunity right here. That oh. misses. Ball one. one ball. It's great to get on the board in the first frame of the ball game, but here's an opportunity for them to really open things up with a couple of runners on. Let's see if they can cash in. The pitch. Right through there for a strike. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. Two on, one out. That oh, one not okay. close. And the count is even, two and two. chase that time traffic on the bases with one already in and we're just getting started here in the top of the first and he walked four, four, your base. Chris Bassett is not having a good first inning here's the center fielder Cedric Mullins good power not great in the OBP department this one's blistered no doubt about it grand slam Cedric Mullins It's their second home run of the inning, and they boost their What was I saying about run nine, support it. for Holden Burns? One home run. Yeah, you can say that's efficiency right there. Didn't need much time in the box to make an impact. <laughs> oh, great job here of staying within himself. You know that if you get a knock, you're going to drive in a couple. So stay focused on that. Well, he does more than just a knock. It's the grand slam to drive <laughs> in four. Really good job at the plate. Colton Kowser, the next to hit for the Orioles. Foul ball there. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team... I'm not Brian, I'm Sean. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact, maybe a swing and miss. Get into that dugout and hit the reset. Well, thank you, Mark. One down, base is empty. How are you? Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. I was hoping you'd be here since I'm playing your Blue Jays. And that's in the dirt. You're fine. I just I appreciate you being here. Like I said, I love talking baseball with you. I love talking the show, whatever you may talk about. Two balls, two Your boy Chris Bassett here is not having a good first inning. Just spit on it. In the air out to center, and it drops in. So a man aboard now with one away. Batting Digging in, the Jordan baseman. Westberg. Jordan. Definitely scuffling at the Westberg. dish lately. Only two hits over the last five games. Grounded to third. Could be two. Connor Falefa oh. tossed the second on the first double play. And that's the end. But two round trippers in this inning. The long ball was working. And the lead is now 5 nothing. Back after this on the show. Yeah. I think it's going to be a three-team race between the Yankees, the Back Orioles, and the uh, Blue Jays. And today's starting pitcher, Corbin Burns. Chris, I tell you what, more common these days, but still, I'll give it credit. He's a strikeout my, uh, type of guy. Well, I hear you about the strikeout. My pick so for the AL Central looked really today, good against you. Consider, like, I'll be very happy when I don't see Kansas City two again, two so hope for the playoffs. Less than two out. Situations where, yeah, maybe you're not a real high strikeout guy, but just knowing oh. you have the swing and miss stop in a big spot, I think it's real critical, and he's got it. Kicks and fires. On a line, base 
base hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't I, always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Burns. They have He's decent pitching. The cut they have speed for days, and speed doesn't it's take on, a day off. It can induce a lot that speed of is going to help their defense. Their bullpen's underrated. That's why I trick. That's why I tried to tell, keep telling Amos when he first started his role as franchise. He's like, I'm going to blow through the first season because I don't expect much. I bet you if Amos had played more games in year one, he could have won the division. Look out! And it hit him. He had two strikes on him. And he hit him. Bulbichette up to the dish. He's been tearing it up at the plate recently. Working on a five-game hitting streak. Yeah, there's a ball. And the late movement on the cutter is really what makes it so effective because as a hitter, you make a decision whether you're going to swing or take a pitch before it actually gets into the zone. So that late movement causes it to miss the barrel of the bat, sometimes miss the bat entirely. Next offering upstairs. Tell fans a little bit about the difference between a cutter and a slider. Well, the cutter hey, looks more like oh, a come ball, on. but it has that late movement like a slider this, Corbin. It's hard to pick up. Now with the slider, it's a little slower, the spin is different, and sometimes you can recognize that. And it tends to break a lot more horizontally and vertically than the cutter. All loaded up, dangerous hitter at the plate. Strike two. That one ripped right center field. And no one can get there. One run is in. Rounds third, headed for the plate. He scores. They clear the bases. And now really? just a two-run deficit. And if you're the pitcher, you can't be frustrated. You know this is going to be the toughest battle. That was a good pitch, too. And you're going to have to face him right on the black. Times. So you just tip your cap and hope that you can get the next guy out. And now time is called as there's a visit to the mound. Just talking things over. Nobody getting loose out in the pen. So a little consultation. Out to short. Whips it to Mountcastle. One gone bottom half of the first. Let me ask you, Mark. You play the show. Do you feel like Mount Visits actually do anything? Look at the lineup for the Blue Jays. One guy leading the way offensively for this club right now, George Springer. And Boog, he's their team leader in home runs. So you know the pitchers on that other side, man. They took a lot of time preparing for him in that pregame meeting. You know, he's got a lot of pop, and it's real pop. It's not fluky at all. He can absolutely change the outlook of a game very quickly. So watch out when he steps in. Dives, and he can't hang on. The throw is still in time. And they come away with an out after a tricky start to the play. This is what it's all about on that right side of the diamond where you've got the first baseman involved in the picture as well. First baseman does a great job. I know they're supposed to raise the confidence. Doesn't panic. The pitcher's exactly where he's supposed to be. Nice feed and a nice play. Yeah, now Justin Turner gets a chance to hit. Not getting the results he's Ah, crap. At the plate recently. Just oh, one my finger slipped. Last five games. Now the pitch is signaled. And wow, a block is being called. And with a runner on third, that's going to bring home a run. And there's a strike. Well, they've been able to score four runs off of him in this inning, and this is where you want to just max oh, out, get as ball. much as you can, give him one, one of those tough one innings strike. where it's going to be hard for him to recover in the next one. Bounce to the left side, and that squirts through. And that keeps the inning going. That makes me feel a little bit better about that fourth run scoring. At least it would have scored on the base hit. And now it's Dalton Varsho. One for four in Sunday's game. Swing and a foul straight back. Turner off of first with two away. How do you even make contact with that? Forget about why do you swing at that, but what? Two outs. Spoils a two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. Also really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That'll end the inning after a lot of scoring. So it's four runs for him. Oh, nine Three runs hits, in the first no inning. And a runner left.
We move to the second in Toronto. Welcome to baseball at the Rogers Center. The Jays. <laughs> second inning set to go. And into the you missed the first inning. You missed a lot. <laughs> and the right hander back to work. Swing and a miss as he was late. Hold one. Strike two. Matthew Ross behind the plate. Pitcher's umpire. Yeah, pitchers that work side to side effectively love being on the mound with Ross calling balls and strikes, boo. And I'm sorry, Mark. I hate calling at the Rogers Center. To me, it will always be Skydome. And a pitch. Swings and misses. It's a strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. So the order turns and I don't know if you're a wrestling fan at all, but two of my favorite wrestling matches in wrestling history happened in this ballpark. Hulk Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan versus The Rock. Now batting. And now the switch hitting catcher, Adley Rutschman. How much? How are you, Moose? He never did say. Do you like that nickname? I won't call you it if you don't like it. Man, at first one away. The next offering misses. Ball two. Last two pitches have been down in the zone. Pitcher clearly trying to get that ground ball double play. But in this count, you're going to have to give in, Good. elevate his pitches, and get back into this at bat. And for the record, man. finds the zone. Now two balls and a strike. It happened twice. WrestleMania 6 and WrestleMania 18. That was the, uh, the two fight. matches I just re referenced. Oh, WrestleMania 6 was Hogan versus Warrior. WrestleMania 18 was... Rock versus Hogan. Just missed. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three hole hitter coming up. And Matty, for the record, you have my number. If you ever need to talk, I'll text away. Well, depending on how old you are, Mark, you may not have been alive when WrestleMania 6 happened. Because WrestleMania 6, let's see, the first one was in 84, so WrestleMania 6 was 90. You want him to go early in the count. That way he's not a distraction to the hitter at the plate. Go That's ahead and get it out of the way so the hitter can focus on the pitch. Base runner with a one-way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on that pitch. Next offering way off the plate. Well, there you go. That's why you don't Swings remember it. Through that one. One ball. Two tricks. Because I was eight. And another ball. <laughs> and now the count is full. And another power hitter lurking in the on deck circle. The Hogan versus the Warrior was a, or Hogan versus the uh, Rock Icon versus Icon was amazing. I think I told you this before, Mark, but last year when I was playing my Royals franchise, Kevin Biggio hit three in three straight games, had three straight walk off home runs against me. I still have nightmares. That misses the zone, and that's ball one. And the pitch. And a foul ball. I remember as a little kid. I mean, a little kid. When, it was like one of the first baseball games I'd ever gone. My parents took me to. I asked my dad, why is everybody chanting, let's go Orioles? Where do they want them to go? 
back to the leadoff spot in the Blue Jays lineup. And why do they want him to go? We just got here. Fall off foul. The Orioles leading by a run. Bottom half of inning number two. And a strike in there. The two strikes may see some movement over there at first base. Trying to stay out of the double play right here. Next pitch is outside. Rarely will you see a pitcher just to waste a pitch like that. The batter wasn't even tempted to swing. Every pitch needs to have a purpose so that it can set up a following pitch to help you get that out. Wide throw, and it gets away. How do you not advance the third on that? Here's Kiermaier now. He's sitting on 99 career homers. We'll see if this is the moment to notch number 100. Throws to Henderson. Out. On a Mount Castle. It's a double play. I think four, six, three double plays like that are way really tougher than these guys make it look sometimes because no matter how you do it, the feed from the second baseman is a tough one. That's where footwork really comes into play, but right there, very well done. Nice bare hand. Check gets a chance to hit. A walk and a run scored his first time. I've literally blown a 5 nothing lead. Yeah, like, I didn't understand that either. Like, like it didn't even try to move. No offense. There, Mark. I thought with a five nothing lead, I thought, okay, finally I'm going to get a pretty easy win with Corbin Burns. I didn't expect this. Wow. off the first with two away. That one misses. And that's three, ball three. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Battling here as he fouls it away. The pitch. Hard on the ground to first. Takes it himself. What a play, inning over. But the RBI single pushes across a run. All even at five apiece. You're watching Orioles baseball on the show, Mid-Atlantic. Back here at Rogers Center, Anthony Santander at the plate. Anthony and he deals. Santander. Fouled off, he was late. Santander getting the start in right. 29 years old, he's been scoring a lot of runs lately. He scored nine times in the last 10 games. Yeah, big swing and a miss. This one smashed down the right field line. Springer there makes the catch. And a quick out number one. Ryan Mountcastle, the next to hit for the Orioles. That one missed. Well, Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this. That game. was a ball. Wow. That second pitch was a ball. Wow. Yeah, the right-hander deals. That one spoiled, and the count now two and one. Tied up here in the early going. Line drive, base hit. But you know, and now here is Cedric Mark. Mons. I mean, I like the human umpire. I like. I don't want a machine calling the strike zone. I like the nuances of the strike zone being slightly different depending on who's behind the plate. You know, I miss the days where um where managers would come out and argue calls. Left hand hitter waits. 
Like, why do we live in a world where everything has to be perfect? Just because we have the technology to do something doesn't mean we need to use it. You know, our founding fathers, our parents, our grandparents. Oh. And here it comes. Yeah, there's ball four. First and second, one out. Come on, Colton. Next to hit for Baltimore, Colton Kowser. One for one with a single so far. And fouled off. So all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. Oh my God, how do I not send that 500 feet? Just missed. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. In the dirt. I mean, for all the... Here's the thing. For all the criticism, even... And I'm not saying Angel Hernandez does need to retire. You know, he Two makes a lot of bonehead calls. So for all the criticism of even him, how many of us, it's easy to money morning quarterback and look at replays and look at TV camera angles. How many of us, do we're sitting at home, do we really think we do a better job? Strike one. No ball. First signs of bullpen movement here in the early going. Mitch White, the young right hander, up and throwing. Now a rip into left center. Dives, but it's off his glove. The throw into second pulls him to third <laughs> safely as a run scores. Now the tag at second, and he's out trying for two. They limit the damage here. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. It's the Orioles six, Blue Jays five. And welcome back to the ballpark. Danny Jansen to hit here. And a pitch. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. Been a rough start on the mound for this guy. His third inning so important for him to get on track, turn the page, settle in, do all those things you need to do to give your team a little bit of length in this round. Base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Good Lord. Now batter. Yeah, the batter is George Springer. He's all for one. Springer. But umpires are also human. I mean, I go back to the number of the Armando, I forget the name of the umpire, the Armando Galarraga perfect game that wasn't because of a blown call. And the umpire sat there in a press conference and owned it and said, I took history away from that young man. Feed to second, that's one. How's Vladdy doing this so far this year in real life so far, Mark? And the first pitch misses for ball one. Yeah, that skips in the dirt. But you know what, Jim Joyce overall was a highly rated umpire. He made he made one mistake, and he owned that mistake. Now that was a huge mistake to cost the guy history, but. That was nowhere near where I wanted the ball. Outside, and that is ball four. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. 
Bar Show. Stands in with two away as he takes a ball. Popped up. Hauls it in to end the inning. One left for Toronto. This one remains close. Mark, I've always I've said to you, and I don't know where he would necessarily fit on your team. I mean the real life Blue Jays, but I've always said that if uh if the Started Orioles let Ryan Mountcastle go to free agency, the Blue Jays should sign him considering how well he hits in Toronto. The wine and the pitch. That's in there. Going one. Swings through that one for strike two. In my opinion, the best umpires are the ones you don't even know the name of because they don't make themselves part of the story. Field two. Swing and a ball hit out towards the You remember, uh, I know the last name Greg, but I think his last name was, or, or was it Ernie Greg, the, the heavy set umpire that was always did the National League back in the day? describe as having elite level speed but he can absolutely move and it is a factor in his game and he grounds one back up the middle boots it and he's gonna make it to first and we'll see how they yep, score Eric Gray. Well, looked like a pretty routine play just couldn't get it to stick in the well so was he so the error should have been two outs in the inning but now they have to work around it and get two more one down and now the catcher comes up to him. Adley Rutschman. And a foul ball. Do you use the uh, umpire personalities in this game, or do you have it on MLB Accurate? Oh. And a curve is down and in. Oh. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Oh. Henderson, the runner at first with one gone to the inning. Fights it off, you'll see another. <laughs> I don't think the personalities actually do anything. I've never... Like, I used to pay attention to what they said. I would I would actually take little notes in my... On my notes on my phone and like they came together perfectly for him right there. Didn't try to do too much with it, just a really controlled, simple swing. We don't see a whole lot of that these days with hitters trying to launch and hit home runs, but sometimes you gotta shorten up just like that. Mitch White will take over here. And one thing on him, he's been really good this season at keeping the ball in the park. Not an easy guy to take deep. Over oh, oh, at okay. the plate and takes high there. The last thing he wants the umpire I don't like, ground, and I can't I think of his name. Um, whoever the umpire was when the Jeffrey Mayer reached the over the uh, into the field of play and stole that home run. Oh, Hawk. Hawk was one passionate, passionate. White Sox fan is a broadcaster. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Anthony Santander. I'm curious how he decides to attack on the mound. This guy at the plate has been great hitting under pressure this year. Sizing this one up. Under pressure. Calls it in for the out. Out number two. Not the easiest thing. Now that when you're talking about a guy that's, you know, Ryan. perhaps is going to be yep. in the rotation. No, well, that's why I said the best umpires are the ones you don't even know the name of. Into it, any with pressure on it, and, and try to get yourself comfortable. Mountcastle. Hirschbeck was one of the great ones. The only reason we know his name is because Al Mars quit his face. But you don't want to take these opportunities for granted. With two outs, you still lock in with a quality at bat, driving that run. You may not have another runner in scoring position the rest of this ball game. 
Which brings up an interesting point. Would you like to see MLB The Show get the license for the real umpires? Yeah, the 2 1 hammered but foul. I know that. I know that all too well. Right handed reliever. I was at that game. <laughs> if I recall. Stranded, but they do push across one. And midway in the fourth, it's the Orioles seven. And the Back now in Toronto. Now it's the second baseman, Kevin Vigio. Burns back to work. Fastball for a strike. It's 0 1. Well, these Jays doing a good job of simply getting the bat on the ball in this game, and the numbers back that up. They're hitting everything thrown at them. Their contact rate is in the low 90s. It's like they know what's coming, and that's just pretty ridiculous what they're doing right now. Those numbers are well above the major league average. 96% contact? Contact? Wow. Swing and a miss, and he chases that one in the dirt. And it beats him for the first out after the drop third strike. You hear people talk about letting the ball travel so often in terms of a hitting approach. And that's a great example why right there. If he's willing to let that curveball get a little deeper into the zone before he commits, he's way more likely to recognize that it's making a beeline for the dirt. On the other One side, thing I wish they would add to nice cast Mark, kind of is like, show me... Takes a strike. Like in my pitches, show me how many of my pitches are fastballs. What percentage... Like they do in real life. I would love to know that. Oh, two Cal, both pitches on the inside part of the plate. Hitter is thinking, I don't want to get beat here. This is a good time for something off speed away. Oh. Ball one there. One ball. That's where it was supposed to be. Two and ball. that's down it away. The Blue Jays trailing by two. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Still two and two after the foul ball. Kicks and deals. <laughs> Committed to that breaking ball just a little too much and couldn't pull now the bat back in time. Yeah. Once you get Kevin. it going, it can be so Here tough to stop arm. the momentum with that barrel. Good pitch, had him fooled. Possibly thinking about home run number 100 here. He's just one shy of that milestone. No, and that's downstairs that's and outside. The Jays oh, no. down by a pair here in game one of this three-game set. High fly ball pretty well struck out towards right center. This looks like extra bases. And he's in at second with a two-out double. Well, let me ask you, Mark. We've seen a lot of Kevin Kiermaier in our time in the AL East, both with you having him in Toronto and his time with Tampa. Do you agree with the people that say he's the greatest defensive center fielder in baseball history? Because there are people that say that. Seven to five. And we're back. New inning getting started. I'm still partial to Andrew Jones myself. And a pitch. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. You know, these Orioles really impressing me with the quality of their bats in this. Yeah, I just don't know if I can put him up. I don't know if I can sit there and say he is the greatest. To get to the starter early, get him out of the game before he settles in. So I'd say mission accomplished. That misses the zone, and that's ball one. And he's got a sneaky good bat. He's not consistent, but he's got a sneaky good bat, especially in this game. <laughs> On the ground to short, Bichette. And they get Mullins for the out. Now bad at the left fielder, Colton. Here's the left fielder. Why did he steal the lineup card? That... <laughs> Pitch misses, and that is ball one. Base is empty, one away, and we're at the top of the fifth. Popped up to the left, into foul ground, drifts towards it, 
two away. The batter, the third baseman. The best one, so the best story I ever West heard was the uh, Jason Grimsley when he played for the Indians. And he snuck into the umpire's rooms to steal uh, Albert Bell's cork to bat. Outside, and it's one one and Down the left field line, base hit. And that keeps the inning alive. I don't know if you remember hearing about that. That was a. Like, as he did it, like, Mission Impossible, he, he climbed up into the ceiling, crawled in. He kept it inside the line, and just a really nice job on the other side by the defense to hold that to a long single. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. And George makes the grab. One left for the Orioles. They're still up 7-5. Back here at Rogers. Let me see something. I want to see because of that air how many of these runs are even earned. John Chavi with my buddy. You gotta look that up when you gotta look up the Jason Grimsley thing on uh, YouTube. It's fascinating. Well, you gotta give him credit out there on the mound. This outing started off a little shaky, but he's found a way to settle in and turn this into a pretty good start. That shows you a lot about his mental makeup as a pitcher. Oh, and two now. Oh, and that's outside. Oh. Stays alive. That's Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a hammer okay. or Uncle no. Charlie, and you can see Jenny. why. It's not a looping slow Jackson. curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. Now it's chance in the head. And the first offering okay. is not close. And that drops in for a strike. The Orioles up by two. Last half of inning number five. And that's in the dirt. Two and two. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. So weird not having a... It's weird to me not having a fastball. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. One down, base is empty. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. That's a pretty nasty pitch right there. I'd call it a power like curveball in the 80s. It's got so much Go spin on it, and you really don't have a lot of time to sit back and watch what it's going to do before you have to commit. It was a good one for the swinging strikeout. Springer in the box with two gone, and takes a look at a called strike. That one, one way one inside. He's got a rare skill set out there on the mound. Even when he's low on energy, his stuff still has bite to it. You just don't see it flattening out just because he's tired. He's still delivering good there action. There it is. Henderson makes the grab, and that's the inning. Blue Jays go down in order. They're down two, seven to five. All right, we go to the top half of inning number six. Here's the Orioles' leadoff hitter, Gunnar Henderson. The pitch. And first offering is fouled off. Henderson, in his third season, 22 years old. And he's a former Rookie of the Year. Good if you're eye new in here, please Movement consider in the liking the video, Tim subscribing Mason, to the, the channel. Up and throw On that Garcia final... Warming up as well. Stretch to a thousand subscribers. Can't get there without you. I believe I'm 
47 away. That's outside. Three and one now. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with a 3-1 count. And that one ripped to left. Varsho brings it in. And there's one down. The batter, the catcher, Adley Rutschman. Here's the catcher, Adley yeah. Rutschman. He had a big swing for the East I think they get, I think, the first he, inning. Yeah, I think they get too much credit one, for quote unquote saving baseball after the. And I don't think right Cal, Cal Ripken gets enough credit for what he did in '95 when he passed Luke Gehrig's and a foul ball. streak and he, you know, signed autographs all throughout the country before games, after games, like try to make a personal connection with the fans of baseball. Count one and two. In the air, left field down the line. Varsho racing over to make the catch. Ryan O'Hearn, the next to hit for the Orioles. Ryan O'Hearn. What do you think of my idea that I gave you about the uh, Blue Jays signing Mount Cast with the Orioles? Let him go to free agency. And that one fouled off. Oh, yeah. And you deserve to be, because, you know, yeah. Cal had his offensive struggles, but he never took a game off defensively. Down, like, and he was the, top half of the, the captain of the infield. He was the guy moving the other players around and... Now a bullet to second base, but he's got it to end the inning. Orioles held in check there. I've gone on record and said five. I believe the, uh, from an offensive standpoint, the streak probably hurt Cal's offensive stats because if he'd have taken games off, he probably would have been more fresh and maybe and had to better offensive to seasons. Now. Not so that I'm complaining about anything. Lineup, but he has been a pleasant surprise all season long. On the mound, he had a little trouble back in the first, but it's been a different story the rest of the way. Really settled into this outing nicely. Let's see. The right hander back to work. Oh. That one misses. Ball one. Two and balls. another ball. No Two and all to Cal. Here it comes. Right, Got it started a little Two too balls. early. One Strike straight. one. To the right side, and that chance handled. Throws the first leadoff man returns. Corbin Burns has settled down nicely in this game. Dalton Varsho next up for the Blue Jays. That one finds the zone, and it's 0 and 1. The Blue Jays trailing by two here in the bottom of the sixth. Next one in the dirt. Good eye right there. That one fouled off two and two. Hi, Ella. Hi, girl. One down, base is empty. In the dirt, and the count's full. Swing and a pop off in foul ground. Drifts towards it. Brings it in. Yeah, there's two away. Well, that was a pitch you got to crush. No matter. Unbelievable that he missed it right Second there. I'm telling you, he is going to be frustrated with himself until Biggio. his next at bat. Biggio in the box now. No balls and a strike. Oh. Next offering is downstairs. One ball, one strike. Two down, nobody on. Woo. Swings and misses. One ball, the count, one and two. And another ball. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees. Mark, how was that not a strike? How was that not a strike? Ooh. Next 
pitches outside. Isaiah Kiner Falefa on deck for the Blue Jays. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And it's a 1 2 3 inning. And we're back. We go to the top of the seventh. And now it's going to be Anthony Santander. Santander. Sit down. And a pitch. That's oh. a little bit low. What a no. Into left center for a base hit. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. He really stayed inside that baseball to send it to the opposite field. With the shift on to the pull side, that's an easy knock if you'll take it. So next to hit for Baltimore, Ryan Mountcastle. There's a swing and a drive. Did he do back it? back there. Made it. Pulls it in on the warning track. Cedric Mullins, the next to hit for the Orioles. He's already homered here in this one. Bounced up the middle. It's in and out of his glove. No throw. That's an error, and everyone is safe. Actually, they scored it a base hit. So first and second with one man gone. And I would have probably, well, one for three. That that one's in even if he feel, even if he feels that the there's no guarantee with the momentum the that he gets anybody. Two on, one out. Strike two. Okay. And that's too high. Bows it off, still one and two. Right hander kicks deals. Oh, and a good oh. eye there. It's a good take. Mm -hmm. One out. Runners at first and second. Ground ball right side could be two. Over to Michette. Oh. Over to first, right. safe. Well, that's great hustle out of the box to get down the line, knowing that a double play will end the inning. Good job at the finish, reaching out for the bag. Now they have runners on the corners and still an opportunity to pick up some runs. Mark, what is that on the Jordan field? That, that, that's that synthetic grass. That's not that's in the, the old Astro turf that used to be on the sky dome, right? That's that synthetic grass. Here at the top half of inning number seven. On the ground to the left. Connor Falefa. They oh. take the force out, out number three. So they strand a pair. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. It's the Orioles seven and the Blue Jays five. Back now in Toronto. Here's the third, the third baseman, Isaiah Connor really? Falefa. Isaiah Connor Falefa. Dylan Tate gets the call from the pen. And he's been hit pretty hard at times this year, so he's looking for better. Right now, giving up more than a hit per inning. The line to kick the pitch. That one found hard the other way. There, now the one. Gets the slider in there for a strike. Dangerous spot for that slider right there. Didn't seem to oh, I know you can hurt yourself run. bad on that strike. Break. Tell you what, he doesn't want to throw that pitch again. On the ground, Holiday tosses the first and one away in the bottom of the seven. Good sinker, low in the zone right there, and produced exactly what he was looking for. Ball on the ground, nice ground out. Here's Kevin Kiermaier. 
pretty amazing going way back. Possibly the best center fielder I've ever seen. No. Oh, he doesn't get the call. Ball ball. Ball. Swung on, fell to Mullins. Going back. I hate Kevin Germain. That one outs against the fence. Round second, take it for third. I hate Kevin Kiermaier. He's in there. A couple of hits in a row for him here. Just a beautiful triple from start to finish. Got a pitch he could drive, turned on it, and hammered it out front into the gap. Right out of the box. I love how he was hustling. Right, I think he knew he was going for three as soon as it touched down. The tying run at the plate. One one. The shortstop takes the ball. Don't be surprised to ball on the ground to the corners. If they come home with the baseball instead of going to first base. The pitch. And down on strikes he goes. Huge strikeout there. Just locked him up right there for the second out. And that's the bat he's probably going to be thinking about for a little while. Didn't pull the trigger. Not how you want to go down in an RBI spot. So now you got to hope your teammate behind you can pick you up. He's actually got a higher pick in it. You know what? And that one is lifted in the air. Mullins in pursuit. And that ends the inning. <sighs> Welcome back and a new arm of the mound to start the eight. Tim Mesa. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. Tim Mesa, that, that little Holiday. hitch in his windup drives me crazy. There. That little hesitation in his right kick drives me nuts. So much drop at it. It's almost like a split finger fastball. Instead of just contacting balls on the ground, he gets swings and misses. And he'll be beating himself up on the way back to the dugout. Hey, Mark, do you know how to get the pitch feedback like late, very late, early for the computer? Henderson stands in now and watches strike one. Toronto's bullpen with some action. Henesis Cabrera up and loosening in the pen. Popped up to the left. Into foul ground. Connor Falefa on his way over. And there's two away. Two outs. Base is empty. Adley Rutschman. Adley. The next to hit for the Orioles. Rutschman. Gotcha. Into center and a base hit. And that extends the inning. And his hot hitting continues. They kept him in the yard that time, but all he's doing now is passing the baton, and everything seems to get started around this guy. So, man aboard, and next is the designated hitter, Ryan O'Hearn. A swing and a miss, and that's strike one. one. Rutschman leads off first with two down to the inning. Swing and a miss. Oh, and two. Swinging for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth. Yenier Cano. And he's had his struggles so far this year, as you can see the inflated ERA. Looking to bring that down a little bit right here. Jansen, oh. the leadoff batter, as he looks at ball one. Well, these Blue Jays doing a good job of putting the ball into play, and that makes things more challenging on the defensive side. They've done a great job finding holes in the defense. Exactly half of their hits have come off the bat less than 90 miles per hour. So the ball isn't exactly jumping off the lumber, but they're no finding a way to make it work. Whips it to Mountcastle. Yeah. Leadoff man is out here in the eighth. Uh, actually want that on. Mm -hmm. Springer, 
Stands in here, takes ball one low. In the air, right field. Bounces over the wall and foul ground, and it's an really? automatic double. Turner climbs in on that right side. Hard liner. Mullins tracks it down for the out. Nothing instills more confidence in a team than a center fielder who makes a great play like that. They can feed off the energy he brings just from his playmaking abilities. In the box now as he leaves that one up high. Oh, a great grab on the dive to first. And wow. that's a great play for the out. This guy's anticipation is off. The charts don't see many great play. Gunner Henry's job to complete the play and end the inning. Back here at Rogers Center, all set to start the ninth in this one. And now, Anthony Santander. Meza back to work. Popped up right side. Guerrero settles under it. Hauls it in for the out. Up next for the Orioles. The first baseman. Ryan, Ryan Mountcastle. The Mountcastle. next to hit for the Orioles. Swings through that. Movement in the Blue Jays bullpen. Trevor Richards preparing to come on if needed. A swing and a miss as he chases way out of the zone. One down, base is empty. And they'll do it again. Well, five nothing lead, and I'm still gonna win the game. And now the lefty, the punch out there, and now two gone. Cedric Mullins, the next to hit for the Orioles. And it's fouled away. Two down, nobody on. Here at the top of the ninth. Almost got him. One ball, one strike. And a foul ball. Two outs. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. So they make short work of him there. And 9-1-2. We're back, and on the mound is the closer, Craig Kimbrell. 29 saves on the season, so he's looking for number 30 right here. He's been big for him in the back of that bullpen. Vigio leading things off and takes a strike. And that skips into there. And a 1-1. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. And the righty deals. Up and in. Now two and two. Oh. chase that time. Okay. Left hand batter waits. That oh, one misses. So a lead off walk. Really? Well, that could be a tone setter for the inning. Four straight pitches and the lead off batters on base. We'll see if the next guy waits until there's a called strike before he takes the bat off the oh. shoulder. Connor Falefa in the box here lets that one go for a ball. Oh, and man. another ball all season long. He's racked up a number of saves, and sometimes the adrenaline doesn't get high enough until oh. there's a runner or two on base. Oh, well, he's going to be one of Amos' pretty general walk. He walked in, and that will keep things going. Walks out of the bullpen can absolutely kill your momentum very quickly. They're in some hot water trying to protect this lead. Now the number two hitter, Kevin Kiermeyer. 
Down the line, and it's foul. Just about gives his skipper a heart attack, but that's where he functions best. On the ground, right side, four. In plenty of time to first. One out, bottom of the nine. That right there was a productive at bat. You know you're doing something right anytime you help move two runners into scoring position and give your team a chance to drive in a couple of runs. I'm going to lose this game. I can just feel it. So the tying run at second. And I'm not, I don't feel confident in anything I'm throwing with Kimball right now. At the belt and finals. Well hit the other way. That one going back. I almost wish I had left Cano in. Oh. The ball is not going anywhere near where I'm throwing it. One ball. This one in the dirt. No movement on the bases. One and two to count. Two and two. Squirts away a little bit. Count moves to two and two as the runners hold. And a pitch. Three. And there's a ball. Thank you, baby. And that'll keep the line moving. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. now. Fall off foul. Everyone here I'm going to lose this game. Just how quickly things could change. Big spot. Tying and winning runs aboard with one down. On the ground a second. Might be two. There's one. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yes. He's done it again, Bill. That's his 30th save of the year as he puts another game to bed. Sweet dreams, everyone. A 7-5 final score in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon. Wow. Oh, it was not. Heartbreaking loss for a Blue Jays fan. Sorry, Mark. tonight first for the victorious orioles seven runs on 14 hits one error they left 10 runners on base for the blue jays Ooh. five runs on nine hits one error they left nine What a game. Ooh. Kansas City Royals, boy. Woo. I consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I will be back later today for some more Royals franchise at some point. 
Have a good morning, everybody. Have a good Saturday. Hope to see you back when I'm back next time. Thanks for being here, Mark.